Hello and welcome to the show on today's episode. Ah, it's one of my overhead lights. A, a little bit of it burnt out and I'm gonna see if I can fix it. Maybe even get a look at how this thing works. Oh yeah, stay tuned. Taking it apart and exploring an LED light. That's a, that's a big Clive special right there, bud. If you've been following the comedy, you might have seen uh, videos where I kind of improvise some lighting. I'm not using wicked professional lighting here. Maybe some of you can tell, but whatever it is, it works. Some of that lighting is these fixtures here, these LED strip fixtures. They put out 5,000 K and that's basically what I've got all my lighting calibrated to. I got three of these overhead, one over this bench, one over there, one behind me for rear fill. And they work pretty well. They're, they're, they're Noma, you know, their local tire store brand. What's it say? 3000 lumens, 28 Watts. Cool. So what's the problem? Maybe if we turn this on, uh, okay, you can see there's a dark spot here. So this was the lamp directly overhead here. And I did find that that dark spot was like casting a weird shadow in a spot and I didn't like it. So I took the light bar that was over there, still working good, moved it over here. And now I need to see if I can repair this one because I, I think I can. Honestly, I think this is going to be a simple enough endeavor. It shouldn't be rocket science. We just have to get into this pupper and see what it's makings of. Now this particular guy has these end caps, so let us take those out. I'm also curious uh, more internally how this thing works actually. All right, see, so yeah, I get pulled back pretty sure once I get one of the end caps off. Okay, it's not happening. I thought I was gonna be able to slip out this general thing here. What if I get a grip on it? Ah, there it goes. This thing actually has a cover over top of it, protecting the acrylic, but I never peeled it off because I like the diffusion. In the previous episode, I added diffusion to one that didn't come with the cover anymore. They either pre-peeled it or they cut costs. What do you figure? Okay, so this is the strip that's down and there's one LED that looks suspicious right here. The question is, can we do some testing on this? This is gonna be, um, ugh. Okay, hold on a second here. <laughs> Mr. Cool Guy's in the house. Okay, this helps a little bit. So what kind of testing do we think we're gonna do here? A testing of voltage between here and here, here and here. You know what, with all this bright, I can't freaking see the contacts. But I'm assuming power would come in here. You know what? It probably would, <laughs> it'd probably help if I plugged my probes in, right? I had a different set of probes plugged in and, and uh, whatever. Now let's try it here. 63 volts, really? And then if I go here, 60 volts. Oh yeah, sure enough, right after this LED. So we got 60 volts here, we move over, we get zero volts. So voltage is not penetrating here. So if we test on both these sides, 19 volts, two volts. Okay, 2.9 volts each. Oh, that isn't easy on the eyes. Not at y'all. Now the first mistake that I've made is before I turned this thing off, I didn't mark the problem area. So I'm gonna mark the problem area. It's between here and here. And I think this is the suspect right there. Did that, it was appreciated off camera. Ah, my eyes, bud. Now let's try sticking this into diode testing mode. And in one way, we shouldn't get anything from them because they're behaving like diodes. But if we turn the probes around, we should get... Oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, look at look at how sweet that is. Look at that. Isn't that just handy? So that works, that works, that works, that works. This one's done. So yes, exactly the one I thought was the problem. Let's get our whole heat iron going. You're mocked for a placement. Now, part of the advantage I have here is that just generally, I do believe I have the correct size replacements in stock. They're not 5,000 K. They're actually warm white. So we might have one that's a little bit different. There are other ways to do this. I have in the past just straight up replaced LEDs with like um, diodes. Cause you know, a diode's a diode, right? But are we gonna get the appropriate voltage drop across it? Let's just do a little experiment here. A little, little sign science experiment. Oh, see, look at that. Fires right back up, but it wouldn't fire if I say did it this way. New. No. So if we test the voltage drop across any given diode on the working area, 2.88 volts, 2 point. I'm having trouble reading the meter. I'm seeing spots. It's actually easier if I do it in the camera screen, 2.89 volts. 
So we'll try a couple different methods here. I got 3.3 volt Zener diodes. I don't know if that makes any sense though. I could probably get one of my cool white five mil diodes, chuck it on there. Now mind you, running diodes in series like this kind of depends on them being balanced, right? And because my eyes are so blown out now, I'm gonna have to flood my work area with light just to see what I'm doing. In order to make this go smoothly, we need to splooge some rosmin all over it. That joke would be funnier if I didn't stumble over my words, but Hey, oh yeah, this, this thing's a, a real piece of work. This LED doesn't even like existing anymore. Look at that. It just freaking came right apart. Never thought I'd be wiping an LED off with paper towel. Okay, we got some contact pads here now, bud. Okay, my friggin' eyes. This is this is one of the more difficult projects. I'm probably gonna end up with a headache just because of this damn it thing. Should give us some fresh solder out here. More than we need if we were gonna put an SMD back on there. So this is just a bog standard 1N4148 diode. I'm gonna clip some clippy probes on here. What's our voltage drop? 0 0.9 compared to the diode next to it, 2.8. I need like welder's goggles. I thought I had some. So 2.92, 2.85. I haven't got the screen queued up here, but the end result is this diode is dropping voltage, but not the correct amount. It's only dropping the amount of voltage it's rated for. So out of curiosity, what happens if I use a Zener? Zener, Zener diode. In one direction, oh wait, come on. In one direction it works. In two direction it works. Okay, I'm gonna get some probes on it. My probes need to be untangulated. So this is dropping zero volts in this direction. Well, aren't you better than the other solution? Zero volts in this direction. The meter wasn't f***ing plugged in. Okay, so what do we got here? Zener Zito diode. Oh, it drops 3.9 volts in one direction. And the other direction should be a lot more standard straightforward. Yeah, just normal dial voltage. So it's dropping too much voltage. So that tells us that if we did get the correct rated Zener diode, which isn't necessarily gonna be the rating we think it is, because this is a 3.3 and it's dropping 3.9 and we want like 2.8, so maybe a 2.3, then we could get a diode that would drop the correct amount of voltage to simulate an LED if we didn't have an LED to put in there. Now, putting a diode in there just allows some voltage drop. Realistically, it looks like with a bank this long, we could just bypass that and get the appropriate results. Just that one strip, yeah, it does look a little bit brighter. The other solution would be to put a resistor in place. So if I could possibly measure the amount of current that this puffer's dissipating across this bridge, 70 milliamps, and stupidly it just keeps going up for whatever reason. Sucks that it keeps slipping. Keeps going up because the diodes keep warming up and consuming more current. It's maybe starting to settle at 83. We're going to assume that it's supposed to be less than that. So if we want it to drop 2.89 volts divided by 0, 0.0, we'll say 75 just for sake of argument, 75 milliamps. 38 ohm resistor? Such a thing does not exist in my inventory. A four to seven exists though. So I've quick, ta I said, I've quick tacked on 47 ohm resistor. It's going to keep having to change probes. Yeah, look at that, we got close. 2.4 volts of drop with a 47 ohm resistor. Now, 2.47 volts divided by 47 ohms is dissipating 52 milliamps. Multiply that by the 2.47, it's dissipating 129 watts, and that's a quarter watt, so it's running half of its rating right now. It's gonna cause these guys to maybe dim out a bit, so if I test the voltage drop across another one of those LEDs, chances are 2.85 yeah actually that's pretty close to where they were they were 2.89 now they're only 2.85 so that's going to be slightly less output than what they normally are but not enough to be noticeable so that's a viable solution replace that with a 47 ohm resistor in this particular light fixture like you're gonna have to do similar math in a different light fixture uh, be careful if you get one that runs a 120 volt bank I've seen them before where all these are in series up to 120 volts <sighs> you might be running a little bit of danger power there. But yeah, I could um, tack one of those on there in lieu of a, a better valued resistor. So right now I'm just troubleshooting, like brainstorming different ways I could repair this light. We all know the ultimate solution is to proper put an LED in place. So um, <laughs> that is a cool white LED right there. 5,000K LED that I have. I gotta figure out polarity here cause I don't know off the shaft in my head. I can tell you right away, it kinda sucks. So this is a big honking five mil LED. 
which isn't exactly going to give us the results that we need because chances are it's going to function very differently than these little mini LEDs that are going to be quite a bit more efficient, I would think. It's showing 3.13 volts drop. It's dropping more voltage than the other. And if we look, well, I don't know if you could freaking tell on here. I might be able to correct exposure here real quick so you can kind of see it glowing and it being like, well, to my eyes, it's not as bright anyway. But that would work in a pinch if you had another five mil LED. It'd be tricky to fit it in there in such a way that it would go under the lens though. Bit, bit bulky for the application. Let's clean up these contacts here. Uh oh, I think these little light bulbs I have are smaller than anticipated. Oh, little bit, very similar, little bit. These guys are a little bit bigger. Got some other LED kits here, they're for trains. This is combination red and green. Oh, I thought I had some larger ones, but no. These are all tiny. Wonder what would happen if I slapped a red and green combo in there. Add a little bit of, a little bit of flair, a little bit of, a little bit of zazz. Now these things have a standard. I, I don't know if you can see it, but there's like a little notch in the corner, like on CPUs, and that signifies the polarity. Okay, I've spliced that LED on there. Let's see what we got. Red. It's red because I think the green disconnected. And even if the re the green hadn't a disconnected, it's just like I find they won't run together. The red overrides the green. So even if we connect the green, it doesn't fire. If we pull the red off, then we connect the green. Boom, there it is. Red and green will not fire at the same time. It's going to be an impedance difference between the two elements, right? So internally, you got two LEDs. They have what appears to be a common ground. So what happens when you connect them together is one of them has a lower impedance than the other right so you got to imagine a circumstance where say they were resistors even though they're not but they do have a respective voltage drop the red one would maybe be uh we'll just pull a couple figures out of our arses here say it's a 100 ohm and the green one is a 220 ohm the power can flow through this path easily more easily than it can the second path so it'll prefer this path and then what happens is it causes a voltage drop across the 220 that just kind of runs it under cutoff. LEDs at a certain voltage, they just turn off because there's not enough to penetrate them. So that's what's happening. At any rate, if we connect one, oh, it's green that I got connected. What kind of voltage drop are we gonna see? 3.2. Now that's with the green element. What happens if we connect the red element? See, 2.03, oh, there's a whole voltage difference. So the red is actually more powerful than the stock LEDs, but the greens are less powerful than the stock LEDs. So these tiny little guys here that I don't even remember what their part number is, but I guess it doesn't matter because they're the wrong size. There's this some random SMD LEDs that I picked up to play with, and I might want to order more because they are possibly handy. I'm just gonna plop that guy on there. See if just sitting her there, it's gonna make a contact. Maybe not. What happens if I rub it in a bit? Really? You're not gonna just go? I sit you on the contact and you're not just gonna just go? What happens if these guys are different? That knot should indicate, oh geez, it's standard is backwards. That's fun, bud, that's fun. You really know how to party. And what kind of voltage drop we got? 3.4, oh, come on, man. 3.22, so not as powerful as the stock LEDs. Oh. <laughs> what I meant by the standard is backwards is the little LED element is a square and then there's a corner with a little cutout and that could signify positive, but this guy needed to be backwards. I don't know if I'm gonna bother wasting one of these guys on this project. Now for the sake of argument, if I hop online here, let's see if I can uh, find the correct LED. LED, integration discrete white lighting. Okay, you see we have all sorts, but they come in a fricktangular amount of sizes. We're gonna delete the LED search entry. We're gonna go in stock. Uh, white, cool, actually clear. Do we have specifications for color temperature? So many specifications. So we're gonna be going by this size. So what do we have here? 3.3, 3.4 mil by 2.87 mil. So on the search filter, we're gonna scroll till we find something similar. 3.3 by 2.8, is that it right there? Yeah, that should be it. Apply, and look at that. It's probably based on some standard. Oh, here we go, color temperature, 5,000 K. Oh, obsolete. 
Yeah, we run into this problem. Can't even get a data sheet on it. <laughs> S uh, available substitutes, similar. Uh, that's hardcore SMD, but I don't even think this is close. It's 1.6 by 1.6 bytes. How do you figure that's a substitute? Okay, well, we need to clear that. And of the available, we'll just go in stock. Zero results in stock for that size form factor? Oh boy. Okay, let's clear size dimensions then. Let's double check that our meter is pretty much zeroed. Let's take another measurement, 3.36. It's a little bit bigger by 2.83. So what about 3.4 by 2.9? You know, you have a little bit of wiggle room there. 325 by 28, 33, 33 by three. Oh, we have a 332 by 2.8. Those look like all the sizes that'll fit. So we have 448 results. Now let's go in stock, 48 results, okay? 3030 sounds familiar. Like they do have standards. These might be just 3030 SMD. They look pretty good. Like these look pretty much like what I'm seeing here. Okay, so that's what? 3528? What's the 3030 look like in the picture? Doesn't show up. So it looks like these 3528s. Now let's uh, let's hit up the uh, 5000K here. And there's two versions, three-step McAdam. Don't know what that means. Might be a higher CRI. Maybe we could order a whole bunch of these things and upgrade this entire assembly with higher CRI LEDs. Really posh up things. Cell semiconductor, mid power. Let's see specifications. Oh, look at that, 2.95 volts. 80 CRI, 180 milliamps max. So we pretty much have a bunch of options here. Let us look at a data sheet for a 3528. 2835, they call it. Somewhere on here, it will express exact dimensions. 3.4, oh, look at that. 3.4 is the electrical contact. 3.3 is the actual girth by 2.8. Yeah, that's pretty much what we're dealing with here. Bottom view has a similar footprint to what we're seeing here. Okay, so I do believe officially, we've determined this takes 3528 type SMD LEDs. So that's 33 by 280. So let us narrow it down to these final seven results. Now we just have to pick one. So we have a choice between S, S1, W, O, dash, two, eight, three, dash, five, five, O, eight, blah, 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 O, P, O, O, three, O, P, O, O, six, O, P, O, O, seven, O, P, O, O, two, O, 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 five. We got a couple Samsungs here too. I doubt they're Samsungs. They look like these ones. Oh, we can't buy just one Samsung anyway. They're uh, a bulk order. So we'll stick with the Soul Semiconductors. Now what's the difference between the uh, McAdam and the normal? We got an odd man out here, so we'll narrow it down to McAdam. And then it's just a case of, we got these two here, 37, 2.95, 2.72, without knowing their intended, like, I don't think there's any way to actually figure out what these LEDs specifically are. Like they clock in a 2.85. My guess would be they'd be the 2.95 and they're running just a little bit less. So we're down to three. Now do these guys have a part number breakdown? Most good data sheets do. Oh, these are all the P007s. As it stands right now, I see no more differences between these. Oh, 20503. And we got the data sheet for the 07. Isn't that nice? And we got the data sheet for the 07. Isn't that nice? Okay, bud. I don't order from this computer, but I'll write this down. S1 W0 2835580003. And then the rest will fall into place. So in the meantime, what's our solution for this pupper? For now, I'm just bypassing it with this 47 ohm resistor, which we're gonna fold all kind of cutesy in here. Just a little crouching tiger, right? Maybe I leave it like that because it's all I need. Maybe I decide to stick a nice, tight, uh, cuter, smaller version in there. I bet ya, if I went scrapping, actually, you know what, this is supposed to be a short video, but now it's turning into a long video because I just keep having more ideas on how to do things. Yep, just as I suspected. These are for extreme nearsightedness because I, I suspected something. And sure enough, on this little board here, I've lost track of them. I should find track of them again soon. 330, 470. So what were we batting here? 2.89 volt drop divided by, we'll say a 33 ohm resistor would be 87 milliamps. That might be too much. We know a 470 is good. So this is an SMD resistor here. Let's see if we can pull that off without damaging it, which is always, ah, I can't see where my tools are now. What the frick is this? Weird ass bug crawling around here. No bugs. Where did I just put it? I pulled it off, I put it down, and now it's gone. That's awesome. Yeah, that's one thing that annoys me about working with SMDs. Um, hello, I just took you off this board. Did I accidentally wipe it up when I took 
<sighs> okay, well that unit I just salvaged is now non-existent. I guess we'll just pull another one. Luckily I found one other one. Okay, let's not lose this one this time. This area is getting awfully dirty. Okay, so a little bit more Rosman on it. A 470 SMD resistor. Question is, that SMD resistor, is it enough wattage? Or is it just gonna burn out? I don't know what wattage rating that little resistor is. Well, what do we have for voltage drop? 2.5. Give it a cleaning. I don't feel a heck of a lot of heat coming off of it, so I guess it's gonna be good. All right, there we go. Just replace it with an SMD. That's cute, Todd. That's cute. So this guy runs from, I guess, here to here. Yeah, I can see the tracks. 22, 22 LEDs. Those 22 LEDs consume this much space. Three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We got eight banks of 22 LEDs. That's 164 total. They appear to be 63 volts a bank. And if I got curious about the R surrender, this screw is stripped out, so that's sweet. That's funny because this uh, this light fixture is actually defective right from the factory. You notice how there's a hole here? That's for the mounting hooks. But look at the other end, no hole. They forgot to put a hole in this one. So I improvised a little loop assembly. Err, oh. You know what? Getting this apart is more trouble than it's worth. Like I was curious to, curious to pull out the power supply, but it's funny how they got this to be one piece. Why is every screw in this thing need to be difficult? That just means it's gonna be difficult to get back together again, right? Didn't I pull one of these apart already? Oh, you're, you're right proper, aren't you? Even this thing's gotta come out. Just got a long strick here. Flimsy. Got a little... Oh boy. Switch mode. Oh, with SMD. Where's the control? Oh geez, it's got the tiniest little controller I think that is. So our usual suspects, we got a fuse, we got a, a little capacitor for... I forget. CX1 is another kind of capacitor, I think. Yeah, some filter capacitors, an X and a Y probably. Typical common mode filter. Bridge rectifier, capacitor, an inductor in a weird spot. Usually you see those farther back. Another capacitor. Then we have our driving MOSFET, which drives one of our transformers. And there's two transformers. That's funny. One of them only has three legs. What is it, an auto transformer? And then we have another with also three legs. Then that goes out to a big filter cap, 330U, 330UF, 80 volts. Yeah, those might actually just be auto transformers of some sort, like inductors. Because you're not meant to touch this inside of this device, it doesn't need the same level of isolation. It can literally just use a basic step-down inductor. And I think that's all we got here with a very proprietary chip. Does it say something interesting? It literally says poop on it. Or is it roar? 1765-R-O-O-R. Oh, what's that? An LT. It's actually a name brand. Wait, these don't look like the same packages. Oh, you. Maximum. Step up, DC, DC. Also too big. Oh, Joule Watt 1765 offline step down LED controller. There we go. This is it here. VCC gate feedback MOSFET inductor. Oh, it runs the MOSFET directly. That's nice of them. Well, that thing dies. We know what it is now. That's nice when you can look up a part number and actually find it. Let's get this freaking thing back together. Cause this is just getting silly now. All right. Other than that, one dead bulb, which is gonna be hardly noticeable now. We are back online. This thing's repaired, ready to go. And it got me thinking, this thing's infinitely reparable by me. By me. Just replacing a little SMD, if a bulb blo if a bulb blows out, that's nothing to me. I can easily track them down, as you can see. I can easily solder them, unsolder them. Done deal. And even that power supply, if that fails, it's simple. It's simple, simple, simple. Assuming I can get one of these, oh, it's even an SOT23-6. I've soldered many of those. Assuming it's it's, it's one of those puppers right there, um, I can get one. Everything else is complicated. Just diodes, resistors, some capacitors. I don't even think I saw another IC chip on there. Like, like there wasn't even a, 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 a 317, a 33, no, an 817. I didn't even see an 817 on there. Maybe there's a diode. Maybe there was a Zener. But this looks like it's just basic diodes and resistors. 
Not much is gonna go wrong with these inductors unless they get like really overloaded. So like I know enough about switch mode power supplies. I should be able to keep this pumper running. So now I can go hang her back up, fill out the light here. I'm sick of having this dark spot. We're done. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did stay tuned because I like tinkering on lighting sometimes. And maybe you like tinkering on lighting too. And this video is definitely longer than I expected.